his own Pasmanian devil is in Kent County Memorial Hospital tonight with a fractured neck. We have yet to hear from the doctor about his condition, but all forecasts are extremely depressing. The individual we'll discuss today became a world champion despite a broken neck. Numerous books and films depict his story. What is shocking is not the movies or books about him, but the fact that this person truly exists. And his name is Vinny Pazienza. Enough. That's That's it. enough. It's all over. That's it. Oh, the down doesn't give him for the first time. Vincenzo grew up on the right coast of the United States in an Italian family. His father owned a barbershop and his mother worked in the local government. His parents wanted to give their youngest child a good education, but he was never interested in learning. He was five years old when he first saw Muhammad Ali on the screen talented in both boxing and oratory. Ali openly opposed the arbitrary rule of the upper classes and became the boy's idol. It has been said that I have two alternatives, either go to jail or go to the army. But I would like to say that there is another alternative. That alternative is justice. Inspired by the legendary heavyweight, Pacienza started going to the boxing Five gym. Years old and I, I loved this guy. I watched him all the time, like every time he was on, and I wanted to be like him. And I was five. Who watches boxing when they're five years old? Meanwhile, in 1976, the sports drama Rocky premiered. After watching the movie a hundred times, 14-year-old Vinny made a conscious decision to become a fighter. His parents at first tried to challenge his choice, but after seeing how obsessed he was with the fist art, fully supported their son. In the late 70s, Vinny began competing in amateur tournaments. By the age of 20, he had won over 100 fights, managing to make it to the national team. When he arrived at the national team, preparations for the home Olympics were in full swing. First up in the lightweight division was future Olympics winner and one of the best boxers in history, Pernell Whitaker. Good straight left by... Pazienza was going to challenge his position, but the day before the match, he was hospitalized due to an attack of appendicitis. Right at the hospital, he was visited by the famous manager, Dan Dewey. Being an experienced businessman, he quickly convinced young Pacienza to give up the Olympics in order to get to the pros as soon as possible. Stepping into the big ring for the first time in 1983, Pacienza already had a distinctive fight pattern. Constant pressure and series work formed the basis of his aggressive style. Now they tangle in the corner. It's been all Pazienza here in the first. Looking... Again, cutting off retreating path, Vinny catapulted his right with a masterful right. Uh, oh, what a right by Vinny Paz, and it rocks Alicia. And never let go again of his opponent. Now he doesn't have to. Who eventually refused to continue. For the professional ranks. For his uncompromising boxing, Pazienza earned the nickname Pazmanian Devil, or Paz for short referring to both the popular cartoon character and the small but ferocious animal. In his first year, after compiling a solid 13-0 record, Vinny traveled to his historic homeland, Italy, to face local veteran Bruno Simili. Pazienza, like a childhood idol, fluttered around the canvas, hitting from a variety of angles. Uh, um, and he picks it up when he's jazzed for the Italian lightweight title. The pace increased with each round in uh, Italy and very durable and his best weapon is a straight right and with it the tonnage of punching that spread of his legs he'd have more Pasmanian devil freely ruled in the distance while remaining invulnerable to counterattacks of the opponent this is uh, Pazienza's jabs on Simili's face he's uh Toward the end of the third period, Pass exploded with a sharp combination. He was up the fight. There was a low blow. Vinny hit him low. And forced the referee to intervene. As he answered on a right. The fight was restarted with a couple of extra seconds added to the scorecards. And Vinny Paz goes right back at Bruno Simili, and that is it. An important test at the end of 1985 was the strong and agile Melvin Pauls at 22-7. Paul has... 
Paz danced waltzily on the platform, scoping out avenues of offense. Tender age of 20. Come on, A dissection interfered with his plans, forcing him to force the issue. And Vinny Pazienza, big cut, opened up. Eager to finish before the doctor stopped him, he went for the takedown, directing the weight of both hands. There will be another cut from that. Nothing on the face of Paul. Pazienza fighting with a fury I have never seen in him. He has after another series of body blows, the devil delivered a final blow to the head. And there's the raid, and Paul goes down. One of the biggest punches I have seen in Having hypnotized his victim beforehand, Pacienza threw a trademark overhand. And there's the raid, and Paul goes down. Vinny has gradually become the pride of his home state of Rhode Island. So in his 20th fight in front of the local crowd, he couldn't put up a dull fight against former world champion Abe Harry Arroyo. After landing a jab, Pacienzo landed a right jab. Arroyo ran in to win the fight back. But Paz was elusive. Competition. He's gonna have to get rid of some of that hot dog in him. At the equator, he began to press after a pendulum swing to the floor. Also the style of Pazienza. That's time remaining in the round. He, he keeps winning with this kind of performance. Vinny persevered at close quarters, where he best realized his speed advantage. In the later rounds, he continued to hold his ground Take this fight. Oh. and celebrated a resounding decision victory. A victory here over Harry Arroyo. That is a Pazienza. The level of resistance continued to rise with each fight. Roberto Elizondo had 30 wins under his belt and was a former WBC title challenger. Broke, he almost fell through him. Vinny maneuvered around the ring, flicking his quick combinations. <laughs> Catching his rhythm, he taunted the Mexican. The big he First Rocky film instead of wanting to box. Now Pazienza just looking to tee off with that right hand. One round followed another, but the Pazmen and Devil never tired and raced forward with undying fury. Half minutes to go. Round seven, and Elizondo in trouble for the first time. Cortez looking. Paz fired with both hands, forcing the referee to stay close at all times. Oh, he blocked him with his shoulder. Cortez in there looking for heart. Pazienza looking to get the crowd into it. In the fight, no knockdown at all. Has the final seconds burned away on the timer as the beating was stopped. As going for the knockout. Martin landed a hard right hand. Elizondo just looking to last it out. No, he won't. A tough Ladies fight, Vinny. It's just an indication you can punch real hard, hard, or is this guy just got the chin of the century? First of all, I love you, Mom. I told you not to worry. They don't come any hotter than Roberto Elizondo, tough opponent. In the summer of 1987, with a 22-1 record, Vinny finally got a chance to fight for the IBF lightweight title at 60 pounds. Greg Haugen was riding a 19-fight win streak and had not lost in the Lovely pros. Here in round seven. Not a lot of oh, big Good, right there's a right. Before the meeting, there was a tiff between the boxers, and Paz did not miss the opportunity to predict the future of the champion. I got a little something for you. They're suspenders, and I'm going to give these to you so your pants don't fall because you're going to be leaving without the belt. You understand? Then they bring props. Pacienza galloped across the canvas, firing his trademark guns. <laughs> Haugen was tucking gently, trying to catch the devil at the ropes.
Soon, both stop listening to their angle, increasingly pleasing the crowd with exchanges. Asiasa getting in with the right, winding up with the polo punch. Is that extra of In the 15th round, which you don't see in modern boxing, Vinny put out his best effort. By Haugen. We're under a minute to go in the 15th. And managed to win the precious ending. So they go. He won a unanimous decision victory and tried on a world title at the age of 24. I wouldn't be stopped today, no matter what, I kept going. Greg's a tough, tough son of a gun. He hit me with some hard shots. I can take a punch, be a good champion. I'm gonna defend it successfully. The confrontation continued. In the rematch, Haugen was already ahead on the judges' scorecards and regained the belt. After suffering his first real defeat, Pacienza quickly returned to action and again went out for a championship fight in a heavier category. The middleweight division was ruled by Roger Mayweather, the same coach and uncle of Floyd. During training camp, Paz had a hectic nightlife, which led to overweight problems. He went through an excruciating weight cut and only made the required 63 kilo on his third attempt. Having been in the casino all night before the fight, Pacienza was not himself in the ring. Pasmanian Devil fought with the same dedication. Up in the crowd are now on Pazienza's side here, even though... But he lacked his usual ease. He willingly played on the nerves of the champion and... <laughs> ...joked at the picky referee. He said, you watch him hitting me on the back of the neck, don't worry about it. And yet the fight was not in his favor. <laughs> and in the 11th round, Vinny missed an uppercut. Oh, out of the blue there. Knocked down the timekeeper, jumping right up in front. That finally decided the outcome of the match. Okay. When the finale bell sounded, Ludo's nerves were fried. The 66 year old coach stood up for his ward. With Ludo, and he was, look at this, he's absolutely going crazy. I don't understand it. Enough physics for boxing without this happening. Ludo has not been a boxing rig. Vinny lost 107 to 110, but the worst happened later. As soon as the result was announced, Pacienza was taken to the hospital with severe dehydration. The boxer's condition deteriorated dramatically, and soon his heart was giving out only one beat in seven seconds. After being knocked down for the first time in his career, Paz took the defeat so painfully that he was ready to say goodbye to his life. My father came over to me, grabbed my shirt, and he started shaking it, and, and, and I heard it like, Jim, I don't care, you lost, don't do this. And he was shaking me violently, and clouds went away, and I came back down. And that's the only reason why I'm talking to you today. After six months, Vinny went back into business. He made some changes to his job, starting to work with Mike Tyson's former trainer, Kevin Rooney. <laughs> On the other side of the ring, was Jake Carolla, a young prospect nicknamed the Bull who was riding a six-fight win streak. Round one. After measuring off the distance with a jab, Paz fired off a swift two-count. Right the difference in speed proved tangible, and he began to boldly provoke exchanges. He's jabbing, bobbing, and weaving, but he's still getting hit. Ten seconds remaining. He got hit with another right, but he hurt Carolla with a counter. And Round number two. Nice up Corolla avoided prolonged exchanges at first, but eventually succumbed to his ego. Pazienza, and he got nailed while he tried to do it. And a left puts down Corolla. Perfectly timed. After scoring the game on a body shot, Paz set the stage with a short sidekick. He tried to do it. And a left. Over the course of the year, Vinny built on his success and went on to another title shot. He faced one of the best lightweight boxers of the 90s, the undefeated Hector Camacho, 
with a 36 nil record. He has to smother. Pazienza was constantly pressing, trying to land his crowning series of punches. Right there, he has him against the ball. There's a big wound up right hand from Pazienza and once again it's his way out of it. That's what he needs to do. He needs to not see. Right, right hand against the southpaw. Camacho was on the counterattack. Range. <laughs> Looking for opportunities like that right. And was not shy to use dirty boxing. You know, he's probably just as hard to fight, fight, fight. fight. And even if Camacho's doing well, then he's got to keep him bunching. In the 11th round, the Puerto Rican again hooked a disallowed takedown to the back of the head, resulting in an elbow strike. The fight. He came up. As a result, the referee took the point away from Vinny, jeopardizing his chances of winning on points. Keeping his distance, and he'll probably, just like that, he'll try and grab and hold and, and tie him up. However, Pazienza looked great against the weight leader. Pazienza goes to the body with a flurry. Combination Spins out of there. Final seconds, Camacho holds on. Conceding a close decision. Oh, Camacho! The Macho Man! The first to defeat Camacho is the previous mentioned Craig Haugen. And it will be him that Vinay will face in August 90. Ahead of the trilogy, Pazienza would move away from his unrestrained style under the influence of Trainer Kevin Rooney. Thus, having subdued the Pasmanian devil in him, he now kept as cool as possible. Good right hand. Punches. Keep boxing. Ooh, good left hand. Tiring Haugen continuous dancing. At the right moment, Paz turned on. It's something that Kevin Rooney he doesn't do anything else. That's all. It seems to hurt him. As soon as old Vinny showed his face, Angle was quick to bring his boxer to his senses. Don't be stupid! Hey. Don't be stupid! You win this fight! Don't play that ball. He continued to build his advantage, picking up tens on the judges' scorecards from round to round. Oh, nice right hand, sneak right. Was a Pazienza. Algen making a comeback, but it's way too late. As a result, Pacienza won convincingly, ending the principled confrontation in his favor. Pazienza! Vinny Pazienza! Slightly tempering the fervor in the ring, Vinny did not give up to lead a binge lifestyle. Nightclubs and a special fondness for strippers, one of whom he married and then divorced, led to loss of shape and, of course, weight problems. WBA champion Loretto Garza did not forgive his opponent for his lack of preparation. Not much you can do. And the Pasmanian devil lost his temper. The referee warned Vinny several times. And in the 10th round, after an attempted knockdown, recorded a disqualification. As we come to the end of round 11, that's it. In July 1991, Pazienza, on the instruction of his trainer, decided to stop the weight race. He moved up to his first middleweight to 69 kilo, where he immediately got a minor title fight against local champion Ron Amundsen. The pumped up Pazienza was quick to shorten the distance, charging in with massive laterals. In the center of the ring, and watches in the world. He looks. Uh, he read his opponent's mind, but uh, with a giant heart and, and will, and didn't forget to entertain the audience. He's had a As time went on, Paz shifted his focus to the body. Long at the end of the seventh, a little bit of a defeated Art Serrano back in September of last year against Glenn Wolf. Now the pace has slowed. I think what he's trying to keep his distance, you can't. Now in the final rounds, he consolidated the advantage, ending the fight on a and major note. Hamilton now coming in. Also like to do with Joey Gamage. The fast, quick combination. Title. 
new USPA Junior Middle Having proved himself in a new weight class, Vinny took his place as a challenger for the WBA belt. The champion Gilbert DeLamo will boast a series of 29 wins without defeat in the professional ring. 54 pounds. Already at the start, Spazienzo hammered the champion at the ropes, unleashing an entire cannonade. Pazienzo, a flurry of punches. The confidence is there. Dale turned on the dirty boxing exactly. championship caliber and soon caught the challenger on the break. Now, the fighters often faced each other head to head, setting up exchanges in the phone. Look at these cards from your local cable system. This is the WBA Junior Middleweight World Championship. As the engine goes to the body, goes inside, putting it together beautifully. By the 10th round, Vinny had finally unleashed the Pasmanian Devil. The Megalogger punches that he caught in the last round. Here comes Pazienza. The referee had better stay close. And to the roar of the home crowd, he began to cut the outsider down. Flurry, a big flurry, but he is getting robbed. Staggering and still could end in a knockout. That's what Pazienza wants. The last minute was melting away on the timer when after another missed shot, do the, thinking now. the Frenchman suddenly remembered that he had forgotten to turn off the iron. Less than that. Four and a half years later, Pazienza regained his status as world champion. And Vinny Pazienza. Immediately after winning the title, Vinny's preparation for his first defense was in full swing. On November 12, 1991, he and his friend were going for a massage therapy, but they were not to make it. A Chevrolet Camaro boxer, purchased with the royalties from their last fight, was involved in a head-on collision. The patient, who was in the passenger seat, was hospitalized. Diagnosis, fracture of two cervical vertebrae and partial paralysis of the left side of the body. Good evening. Rhode Island's own Pasmanian devil is in Kent County Memorial Hospital tonight with a fractured neck. I think about it often, and I just remember holding on to the handle. I remember saying, the last thing I remember, I'm never going to defend my world title in any. Boom, we got nailed. Vinny's treatment was taken by one of the best neurosurgeons in the country, Walter Cotter. Already at their first meeting, the bedridden Pazienza asked how soon he could return to the ring. But all the doctor thought about was whether the famed Pasmanian devil would even just walk. A special metal frame was installed to fuse Vinny's vertebrae. The whole structure weighed more than three kilo, and bolts and fasteners were screwed directly into the skull. A week after the accident, the, the boxer was sent to home treatment. He was required to keep physical activity to a minimum. However, not ready to resign himself to fate, he exercised in the basement in secret from his parents. Dr. Cotter had no idea what the patient was doing. However, with each new checkup, he noticed an improvement in his condition. When the secret of the wine was revealed, his mother begged him to stop exercising. Her son's response made her even more upset. Mom, I'm either going to box again or die trying to do it. Three months after the accident, Pazienza announced his intention to return to the ring. Dr. Carter had a tear in his eye. I could tell he felt for me. And he said, son, I'm sorry to say you're not gonna box again. And I looked at him, I said, no, Dr. Carter, you're wrong. I am going to box again. I said, you don't understand what kind of man I am. Vinny came to the ring 13 months after the accident. During his absence, he was stripped of titles. On his way to the top, he was given a tough journey man Luis Santana. The Pasmanian devil scored a convincing victory, recording one of the most remarkable comebacks in the history of professional sports. The boxer's feet traveled the globe, bringing him worldwide recognition. Movie companies flooded Pazienza with generous offers, but he was not going to put an end to his story. I put the neck issue to rest. I made a great comeback. 
We can all talk about it. Intent on reclaiming the championship crown, Vinny challenged former title challenger Brett Lally in March 1993. After a nervous start, the boxers relieved the tension with a long exchange. Around the sport that long, we know how to fight. Although he is getting hit with a big left hook. Well, he hits Pazienza with a right. And here they Paz worked skillfully at the change of pace, squeezing from zero to 100. He came back, he says he's a star. Boom. So much is on the inside. He doesn't want Lally reaching. He doesn't want Lally. Inside 10 seconds left in the fifth round. He deregulated seamlessly in the ring, adjusting his opponent's appearance more and more each minute. Something to make them be quiet. Well, a fairy tale story of Vinny Paz following the automobile accident and the broken neck. As big as Paz. Lally has a big heart, but now he's going to be going to have a. After the sixth round, the Irishman looked like he was sticking his head into a beehive, so the doctor decided to intervene. Having confirmed his place in the elite, Vinny faced Floyd Honigan, the former absolute welterweight champion who held all three major titles in the late 80s. Tana and Brett Lally. Pazienza pressed the Brit to the ropes. Fighter is hurt. And it is Pazienza closing in, now ripping away. Where he tried to put a hole in him with every punch. Trying to get a back. But he says he's not concerned. Oh. He's put in hundreds. Feeling bloody, the Pasmanian devil lashed out. Close the show and put on the, the Pasmanian devil. Boom, there it is again. Vinny Pazienza looking for bigger and better things. Again, works the crowd. Well, Pazienza oh. certainly sensed oh, that maybe. In the ninth round, Vinny landed his favorite overhand. Oh, big right hand. And Hunnigan may be about to go. And in the next round, he escorted his opponent to the canvas. Twisting and turning at the waist, but runs into that one. In the tenth round, a towel came flying out of the opposite corner. And now the However, Paz was not willing to accept such a humane outcome. Larry Hazard, the commissioner, looking to help. He's the Pasmanian Devil, Vinny Halsey. By the age of 30, Vinny once again changed weight classes and jumped to the second middleweight division, up to 75 kilos. He was met in his new territory by Robbie Sims, a well-known prominent contender who held the chain for five consecutive wins. The first thing Pacienza did was check his chin down for real. Oh, oh nice. goes Pacienza. And feel his liver. That he never fight again. Sims opted to bide his time, acting as a counterpuncher. Well, the first fight was turned by a cut. We thought yeah. Sims Paz understood his tactics, so he began to carefully disguise his attacks. Oh, because of the way they stand. There it is. That the comeback was at the end. And at the end, he played the matador. You have to force it in these fighters like Vinny Pazienza. Flawlessly. By the final round, victory was within reach, but Vinny was not one to play it safe. Let's check for Pazienza. With six consecutive victories, he earned the right to challenge the minor IBC title and, most importantly, to share the ring with a living legend. Roberto Duran, for 25 years of professional boxing, managed to become a champion in four weight categories at once. By that time, he had 92 victories to his credit. Although his golden years had passed, his fists still retained their former former power. <laughs> Pacienza immediately sensed the power of the Panamanian. As he's keeping his distance. But his pride did not allow him to recognize the knockdown. He continued, without hesitation, to throw himself into the embrace. Until he again came upon the enemy's camp. This is called a giving credit to the veteran. From now on, the Pasmanian devil acted more selectively. Oh, big left hook, Pazienza. Out the ring against a journeyman from 
and much more effective. Good left hook. <laughs> the winner was decided in the final round. Into that shot by Duran. It is passing Enzo setting up. Last month on the fight ball in the USA. There are more shots downstairs. Still fighting Vinny Pazienza. Look at these shots from him. Speed is power. Oh, he takes it. A fresher Vinny looked more accurate and took the decision. Oh, followed up by Pazienza. The speed combination. Pazienza's good combination. Will they embrace after the fight? A year and a half after his comeback, Pazienza was back on top. It brought back the memory that Duran hit me harder than anybody in this freaking game. Oh my God. When he hit me with the first shot of the fight, so I was like, pass me. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Move around. Get warm. You won't feel it. You won't feel it. Don't, don't worry. Don't hit me with another shot. Boom. I'm like, oh my God. I got to take 12 rounds of this shit. Returning to Olympus after breaking his neck, Vinny became one of the major stars of the lightweights in the mid-90s. He shined on the covers of sports magazines and attended late-night shows where he shined with his wit at every opportunity. I'm afraid of two things, Conan. And they are? Fire and marriage. <laughs> I don't fear fire. <laughs> I'm going easy on you. You yeah. mashing my name up. Because I feel, you know, you got a big chin. I got a big right. nose. Right. So, <laughs> I got a little... What do the Las Vegas book guys say? I'm favored. Favored I'm favored. How much? Uh, right about two to one. Two to one. You know, I mean, I had screws in my skull. I had a broken yeah. neck. I wouldn't let that stop me. There's no way I'm going to let a Panamanian legend on Geritol stop me. <laughs> now, when you go through the metal... including one-time heavyweight champ Roy Jones Jr. Imagine I fought the heavyweight champion of the world. What the f was I thinking? <laughs> I'm 5'8 on a good hair day. <laughs> this is going to be Drago versus Rocky. This is I must break this, you? <laughs> this, yeah, this dude, I went to Canada to a press conference with him. I went, hey, Eric, how you doing? I, I must break you. That's all he said to me. The dude's got no personality. It's all he does is train, high tech. He's got nutritionists, therapists, conditioners, sparring partners, coaches. I got a sex therapist who's sitting over there. That's about it. Yeah, I love him as a warrior, you know. And before the fight, I was like, man, he shows up. He's cute. He's nice. I said, come on, Glenn, let's say something to piss me off. But he, Even you he, couldn't get you mad, huh? Couldn't get me mad. He's a great fighter. So I had that four cappuccinos and no sex, <laughs> and that's the only thing that could get me me. Yeah. Caffeine and no sex. All right, I guess that would get you. He's going to wait till I get old and something different's going to happen. I could fight this kid when I'm 55 with a toupee that has dandruff in it and, and like, dentures in my mouth, and I'll still knock his ass out. I am so glad I'm on Vinny's good side. The more black eyes I get, the more chicks I pick up. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be a busy man tonight, won't you? After getting a taste of star life, Pazman's devil, who was never known for his iron discipline, inevitably lost his way. Paz used alcohol, but the key problem remained a gambling addiction. Vinny would spend hours hanging out in the casino often gambling the night before a fight. As well as in the box at the table, Pazienza played big, easily burning through hundreds of thousands of dollars. He went into debt while continuing to sink money into his favorite blackjack. Paz always denied that life outside the ring was getting in the way of his life inside. However, it was obvious that the boxer was lying. When the long-awaited gong sounded, all of this couldn't help but come out. Nevertheless, he defended the title in a rematch with Duran, extending his winning streak to 11 fights. And in June 1995, at the height of his stardom, he got a fight for the IBF belt against young prodigy Roy Jones. Pazienza promised to shock the world, but on the way out, gave his worst performance in his career. They both spread their arms, hot going in there. Pazienza says, let's get it, so you got me. Jones, roll, one hand speed right now, he's got Pazienza ready to... Roy easily outplayed the Pasmanian devil. Price for coming in. Pazienza not offering much in terms of offense. He didn't even let him touch him. Oh, yeah. 
and he put the fight to bed in the sixth round. Number six. Jones says, come on, Vinny, let's call it a day. That's going to be it. I think Tony Allen, it's over. In 13 years on the front lines, Vinny Pacenza was knocked out for the first time. A loss to the peak, Roy Jones, who crushed everyone in his path, was fatal. A year later, Vinny was on his way to another title fight, this time swinging for the belt of the new WBU organization. Pazienzo decided to use it as a springboard for rising star Dennis Rosenblatt, much to the annoyance of the Pasmanian death. Five other. In the opening minutes, the young champion managed to distinguish himself. Good shot left by Rosenblatt. But he relaxed too soon. Is that a slip? Vinny could not get close, constantly bumping into hard punches. Oh, oh Vinny walked into a, to a right hand. He got stunned. And he's the biggest crowd he's ever fought in front of. Great left hand. He was starting to be written off. Rosenblatt's in total control right now. Vinny's got to try something. I don't think he's had a meaningful combination yet. Forget about respect. I don't think he's got Rosenblatt's attention which only made the comeback more spectacular. Pazienza fight a lot. Oh! oh! Right hand! Right hand and Rose... The referee restarted the match. There we go! That the referee should stop it! As he immediately paid for his decision. That's it! Oh, down goes the referee! Goes the referee. Down goes the referee! Vinny knocked out two men in one night. Between them, as the second punch he threw, he hit the ref and he hit... ...and helped the commentators raise their level of competence. Oh my, am I sucked. <laughs> the Pasmanian devil may have had discipline problems, but you don't drink character in a bar. You don't lose it in a casino. Yeah, I lost one fight in the last six years. Now I came back after a year off with this young undefeated kid. You know, they tried to tell me paper from my hometown, tried to tell me that the war was over. The war is not over. Life is a battle every day. The war is only over when you quit, and I don't quit. In the late 90s, Vinny's career hit the finish line. Looking for a new challenge in July 1998, Already in veteran status, he faced former IBO belt holder Glenn Wood Brown. 28 have come within the first. After dropping to a knee in the third round, Pazienza got angry, bit down hard on his mouthpiece, and went for the gnawing on character. Brown, although I don't think Brown is hurt. Brown says Kevin, he says he's got to feed my fiance's rabbits when he's coming. Good left hand by Pazienza. In the end, he finally proved his superiority. Round 10, the press in your memory book. This has been a good one. Nominate oh. from Pazienza. Hey, give Vinny Pazienza all the credit in the world. He's getting wet. The only stoppage loss is due to cut, and he will make the bow, and everybody... Pazienza! Pazienza! Against another Arthur Allen prospect, Paz relentlessly pressed, piling on the level. Allen cannot hurt him. He's not a big guy. Take a look at Teddy's scorecard through three rounds as Vinny hooks to the body and hooks to the head to the right. right he's fighting a game fight. He's right in front of Vinny, this guy when you're not big punching, you fall one at a time. Despite the 10-year age difference, Pazienza was many times faster. A good left hand from Pazienza, a hook to the ear. A guy who lacks late power, can he hurt Pazienza late? There's the left hook, but not hurt. Good uppercut by Allen. That's what he used against Rosenblatt. Arthur Allen getting braver. The veteran controlled throughout the evening. Round needs to be busier. And in the last round, according to good tradition, gave the audience a bright final. The markers of Queensbury rules. This is just fighting. Left hand from Allen. Pazienza seems to be enjoying this. Look at this. He's taking punches. He can afford to do it because the guy's not a big puncher. Wow, what a 10th round. Feeling that age was taking its toll, in 2004, Vinny promised himself to quit boxing as soon as he won his 50th fight. Not wanting to be a passing fighter, he approved only former title challenger Toker Pudwill as his opponent. Frank Stallone dedicated an entire song to Pacienzo. I had a few... And he had old rival Robert Duran in his corner. Then he passed for the final time. 
In the first few rounds, Vinny looked like a pale shadow of himself. Big fight of his life. The third battle, he prefers the warrior of the team. An ignominious end was on the horizon. But needless to say, what happened next? But Zianza suddenly cheered up, unleashing the Pasmanian devil one last time. I knew I wasn't going back to fight again. I got my 50th win, slightly amazing for fighters today. He, he did as best as he could. I was just a little too much for him. And I was thinking to myself, like, mother f if a decade ago I would have knocked you on your ass so bad. And, and then I literally said, yeah, Paz, man, shut up, because that's what Roberto Duran was saying about you. So just shut up and win the fight. <laughs> yeah. With his career over, it took Vinny a long time to adjust to regular life. He lost his parents and, unmarried, he was finally at the mercy of his own vices. The boxer launched a casino worth more than $7 million and got into serious debt. On the verge of financial collapse in 2007, he was forced to declare bankruptcy. In parallel, Pazienza was in constant trouble with the law. Over the course of a year, he accumulated a double-digit number of arrests. His crimes ranged from issuing counterfeit checks to drunken assaults. He miraculously managed to avoid jail time, each time ending up with hefty fines. Vinny's life made sense in 2016 when the movie The Passman Devil was released on the world screens, telling about the return of the boxer after a broken neck. The main role was played by Miles Taylor, and among the producers of the movie was Martin Scorsese. The sports drama received positive reviews and brought a new wave of fame. Now Pazienza resides in his home state of Rhode Island. He managed to overcome the game addiction, and in recent years, he stopped appearing in criminal reports. Who knows, maybe the great Pasmanian devil is finally at peace.